All right, we're at the last section of chapter 36. This is uh, uh, 36, uh, six, the Michelson interferometer. Um, let's uh, dismiss this so it doesn't interfere. Um, I played with the Michelson in, uh, interferometer when I was at St. Mary's University, taking physics at St. Mary's University. Um, and basically where you see uh, M1, there was a little, a little, a uh, tiny little uh, high resolution knob that would uh, adjust. It, it's like a micrometer. It was like a micrometer adjustment that uh, uh, several turns would just move it just slightly. Uh, so you get you get a light source here. The light source goes to a, what is called a beam, beam splitter to where half the light is reflected off of this mirror surface onto this mirror surface and transmits through. And then this one, this light, Part of it goes through, hits this mirror, hits this reflective surface, and goes back. And depending on the uh, the distance of M1, you'll get uh, you'll basically you'll get uh, fringes, or you'll uh, in some cases you'll you'll get uh, light passing through, or uh, for, with um, constructive interference, or you'll get darkness for destructive interference. So let's read the, the boxes. A single ray of light is split into two rays by mirror M0, which is called a beam sp splitter. Uh, the path difference between the two rays is varied with the, the adjustable mirror M1. So you move it back and forth uh, in this direction. As M1 is moved, an interference pattern changes in the field of view. Uh, and that's the basics of a uh, Michelson in interferometer. And let's look at, at this is, uh, uh, it's used in a Fourier transform infrared spec spec in spectroscopy, FTIR. I did my thesis work uh, for my, my uh, uh, master's degree uh, on uh, using an FTIR. It was uh, uh, measuring the, the the rate if the rate of uh, we were using gases hydrogen and uh, uh, nitrogen and different gases and and we were seeing if the flow rate uh, if the flow rate changed the the uh, uh, the results the resolution of the results how in other words how fast could we flow the gas and still get results in our FTIR and you, you get a you get a result like this the light measured by the detector. Um, you get the mirror position, uh, so you get this signal, but then uh, you use a Fourier transform. Uh, this is equation is, I think it's 1714 back in your textbook uh, where we discuss uh, Fourier transforms. Uh, the, you, you don't have to memorize this. We're not gonna use this on any, uh, any test or quiz or anything or not even homework. <laughs> Uh, you can you can break down the different components that uh, that make up the transform uh, that make up the the uh, the spectrum. Uh, so that's that's a um, uh, uh, FTIR uh, spectroscopy, uh, and then the laser interferometer uh, is the gravitational wave observatory, and this is uh, one of the observatories. This is a uh, each of these branches is four kilometers, and I've got a little drawing that came out of the Direct Observation of Gravitational Waves Educator's Guide, and this is at http uh, www.ligo.org. Uh, so if you go to, if you're interested, you can go to ligo.org and get more information. But I'm just going to basically read the uh, the um, uh, uh, the paragraph here, so you you'll uh, uh, see how it's applied. LIGO consists of two perpendicular four kilometer arms as depicted in figure 10. A laser beam is fired into a beam splitter that sends half the light down one uh, of these arms and half down the other. The mirrors then reflect the light back the way it came and the beam splitter com combines the two beams back into one, sending the combined beam to a detector. LIGO carefully tunes the lengths of the detector arm so that the light from the arms almost completely cancels out or undergoes destructive interference when the reflected beams recombine back at the beam splitter. However, if the arm lengths change slightly due to a passing gravitational wave, that, that, 
then the differences in length will introduce a small difference in phase between the beam from the different arms. The waves that would have canceled each other at the beam splitter will now travel different path lengths and end up producing some light at the detector. And that's uh, uh, what a LIGO does. It's a little more information, I think, than the book is. But, uh, and that ends our uh, uh, discussion on wave optics.